right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And as I say on a regular basis, this job just keeps getting better. Nice to see Josh Bergstrom in the store. One of my favorite producers from Oregon. And uh, I've never had his, uh, well, I think he made his Chardonnay last time he was in. It was a couple of years, but not something you see very often. Outstanding Chardonnay from Oregon. And we talked about this and a lot of it is the colonial selection they had and they planted it in the wrong places. Today, you're starting to see much, much better Chardonnay, like this Sigrid, which is, uh, wow, it's a blend of all five properties, vineyards that they have. It's been made since 2006, and you can tell Josh is a big Burgundy fan, because this wine, on the nose, a dead ringer for Premier or Grand Cru Burgundy, got better on the second day. This The nose on this wine just seemed amplified. A lot of lemon drop candy. Sigrid is his grandmother's name, plays, pays tribute to his grandmother. A nice touch of oak to this wine, too. I think everyone styled back the oak, but I like a little oak in my Chardonnay. This wine has got just enough, less than 25% new. And uh, like I said, it plays off the fruit in this wine beautifully. And uh, it's got a pronounced minerality to this wine also, kind of a flinty note to it. And uh, even more pronounced on the second day. This wine, lovely creamy texture on the palate, long and layered finish, and uh, very, very well built. This wine will last 10 years or more easily and uh, most excellent juice. All right, the Pinot Noir Cumberland and uh, this is the first wine that they make. You know, they've got five different estates, and uh, they put together this wine first, and then the rest of the wines go into the single vineyard wine. So uh, kind of unique well, way to come about making your entry-level wine. But they've lowered the production of this wine considerably because he's only using his estate fruit now. They went from 7,000 to 3,000 cases, and I agree with Josh. You know what? Your entry-level wine should be your calling card. You should over-deliver with this wine, which they do at forty-seven fifty. by far the best value in the lineup. This wine has a beautiful bouquet on it and a little lovely spice in this wine, that brown baking spice. Uh, you get some lovely red berry fruit here and a little bit of an earthy note to it as well. These wines all very well balanced now. They used to be a little big and somewhat over the top, but now they're focusing more on the savoriness of the uh, uh, Pinot Noir varietal. And uh, not that it's underripe. Some of his wines from 11 were under 13%, but that's just what the vintage gave them. Hey, the, the 12s are back up to 14%. And, uh, you know, like I said, these wines very well balanced. The Cumberland, excellent. And a little less concentrated than the single vineyard wines, but uh, wonderful balance again and a lot of nuance on the finish. Uh, every bit as nuanced as the Gregory Ranch or the Silice. Um, and this is uh, the Gregory Ranch we had first, 21 acres in Yamhill Carlton, a little higher elevation here, uh, lots of hang time in 2012, 93 days of sunshine in a row, wow, very warm, and that means you can harvest whenever you want to, when you have good weather, you don't have to rush, you don't have to worry about the rain, and uh, like they did in 2013, they had to harvest, uh, there was a bit of rain there at the end of September, they had to pick a week early, they got some of the stuff in, most of it in before the rain, anyways, this, uh, 2012 Gregory Ranch, uh, really bright black cherry fruit on the nose, pretty floral notes, a little orange peel and brown spice in there, a nice touch of fresh earth, a 1 point tons per acre, so very low yields in this naturally. I'm going to make 406 packs of this wine, so for $65... This is an excellent value also and most excellent. A lot of dark raspberry and cherry fruit showing on the palate. Lovely brown spices, earthy notes, silky smooth tannins, wonderful freshness, a long finish, very well built, most excellent juice. The Silice, uh, this refers to the soil. It's a warmest vineyard site and it's all sand, quartz-driven sandstone. And uh, used to be called De Lancelotti in the past. And... Um, they lose 20% of their fruit here to sunburn. Wow, that seems like a lot to me anyways. And a uh, good amount of wild strawberry, red berry fruit on the tongue here on the nose with light smoky notes in this wine. Some earth also present. Fine and elegant wine on the tongue. This wine's got a lot of velvety, silky uh, tannins to it and lots of concentrated rich fruit, exotic spice, those truffle notes showing through on the, on the finish. A big but balanced wine. It's 73, 25, everything from Bergstrom. Excellent to most excellent quality on this afternoon. That's what we had to drink with Josh. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off from the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.